Good news for all the Kotlin fans. MongoDB has just released another library in Kotlin, MongoDB Kotlin Driver, that allows you to interact with data in Atlas seamlessly with the simplicity and the flexibility of Kotlin language. And today, I'm going to show you how to get started. My name is Mohit Sharma and I'm a developer advocate at MongoDB. Earlier, I mentioned another Kotlin library. So which was the previous one? It was the Realm Kotlin SDK that allows you to interact with your data in the mobile devices and Atlas. Whereas the MongoDB Kotlin driver allows you to build backend application scripts, etc. So let's begin our tutorial. In this tutorial, we'll be building a CRUD app, which I think so is a fair start. It's not too complicated, nor too simple. And for the prerequisite, it would be great if you have some understanding of Kotlin and have an Atlas account. If you don't have one, I would recommend you pausing this video and come back when you have an account. Link is in the description below how to create free forever Atlas account. Let's begin building our project. In this tutorial, I'll be using IntelliJ IDEA to build this project. But feel free to use any other IDE which you like, but do make sure it supports Kotlin as a programming language. To create a new app, click on new projects which will open up a project wizard. Now let's go ahead and update the properties. I'll call my project as Kotlin CRUD app. I like to save my project under idea projects. I'll be using Kotlin as a programming language, build system as Gradle and Gradle DSL as Kotlin. With this, we have successfully created a bootstrap project. Now let's see how to connect this bootstrap project with MongoDB Atlas. To connect any project with MongoDB Atlas, you can use a MongoDB driver. Since this is a Kotlin project, I recommend using Kotlin Coroutine driver. To add a Kotlin Coroutine driver dependency to our project, open build.gradle file and then scroll up to the dependency section and then add the Kotlin Coroutine driver dependency to it. And don't forget to sync your Gradle file. With this, we have successfully added a Kotlin driver to our project. Now, to connect with MongoDB Atlas, let's create a method called getDatabase, which is responsible for connecting with MongoDB Atlas. This returns me a Mongo database instance. The first step in this is to create a Mongo client. which takes a connection string as an input argument. For now, I'll hard code this blank. With this instance, I can call my database using get database. Here, I'll be using sample restaurants as my database, which is a sample dataset provided by MongoDB. Now let's call this method from the main to list all the collection present in our database. So let me create a variable called database that will get its value from the get database method. Now with this instance, I can call a method list collection names, which returns me a flow of strings. As you can see, our Kotlin driver supports a lot of Kotlin features by default, like flows. Now I have collected this flow and let me go ahead and encapsulate this into run blocking to run this flow. Before we test this method, let me quickly grab the connection string. To get the connection string, open your MongoDB Atlas account. Then click on connect, then on drivers and copy the connection string. As you can see, the connection string contains a user credential. If you don't have one, you can create using database access. I have my connection string with me already. So let me go ahead and add the connection string to the environment variable. I'll call my connection string as Mongo URI. And then I can access the connection string using system.getENV and pass the environment variable here, which is Mongo URI. With this, our code is ready. Let's run this. 
and this has printed all the collections present in our database. Our first operation in the CRUD app is create. So let me create a method called add restaurant. Now to add a restaurant into my collection, let me create a data class called restaurant info that represents my restaurant object. Let me add a property called ID, which will act as a unique identifier for all my documents. Then name and few more. And lastly, I'll add restaurant ID, which will act as a unique identifier for all my restaurant object. I have created this restaurant object looking at the restaurant in my collection. So let me show you the restaurant collection. I've added just few properties here, but notice that restaurant ID and underscore ID are written little differently. So let me go ahead and map these properties here to map underscore ID. I can use Bison ID and for mapping restaurant underscore ID, I can use Bison properties, which takes an Alice team as an input. Now let me create an object from this data class. Let me initialize the ID. I'll call my restaurant Mongo cuisine as American. And for now I'll hard code my restaurant ID as random ID. With this, we have the object. Now let's save it into the database. For that, I need a database instance. So let me pass that. Now let's retrieve the collection from the database. I'll use the method called get collections again here, pass on the restaurant info, the name of the collection that would be restaurants in this case. And now to save this, I can call the method insert one, which will save the info object in my collection. Now let me print the output as well. I'll print the inserted ID. Error here on insert phone function is trying to highlight that it's a suspend function, which would be joy for any Kotlin developer as you can use coroutine out of the box. Coroutine is a Kotlin way of writing asynchronous code in a synchronous fashion. So let me go ahead and update the method property to a suspend function. Now let's run this from the main method. Let me get rid of this and call the method here directly. Now let's run this. Yay, we have successfully inserted our first object. Now let me go ahead and quickly verify this from MongoDB Atlas as well. I'll write my query as restaurant underscore ID as random ID. As you can see, we have successfully added the object. Now what if I want to add multiple objects? So let me quickly update this code and show you how to add multiple objects in one go. I'll create a copy of my restaurant info. Let me update the restaurant ID as random here. Again, I'll update the object ID as well. It's a unique identifier. Now let me update the code block. Here I'll use collections.insert many, which takes the list of argument as an input. I'll pass on my two objects and then let me go ahead and print the result as well. Now let's run this. Yay, we have successfully inserted our two objects in one go. With this, our create operation is successfully completed. Next operation in our CRUD app is read. In this, we need to find all the restaurants that have either restaurant ID equal to random ID or they serve American as a cuisine. So let's create a function 
read restaurant that takes collection as an input argument instead of the database. I'm just doing this to avoid boilerplate code. Now let's define our filter parameters. I'll be using OR operator here. Now let's initialize our first query parameter. I'll say filters equal to restaurant underscore ID random ID and the next one is filters equal to cuisine name here I'll use the callable method for accessing cuisine name equal to American now I'll use the find operator to read the restaurant now let's pass our query parameters as filters let's limit down the result set by 2 and then again we can collect the output I'm gonna print the output as well here again notice collect is a suspend function so I'll mark my method as a suspend function now let's go ahead and run this I'll comment out the previous one and add the new method here again we don't have the collection so let me go ahead and write the code for that as well I'll quickly copy this and paste it here now I'll just pass it on all set let's run this and we got our result set back in this we got the restaurants which serves American as a cuisine and with this I can say we have successfully completed our read operation our next operation is update in this operation we will rename our mongo restaurant to mongodb restaurant let's create a function update restaurant that takes again collection as an input argument now the next step is to define our query parameters I'll say filters dot equal to restaurant name mongo again I'll be using my callable method name here now to update this I'll define my update set I can use update here and then set my restaurant name to mongodb now to update this I can use update one function which takes filter and update set as an argument and now let's print the result in this I'll print the number of documents that have matched against my query and the number of documents that have been updated update one is a coroutine so let me go ahead and mark my method as a suspend function now let's call this from the main method let me comment out the old code I'll call my method update restaurant pass on my collection now let's run this ideally it should update three documents but we got our result that only one document has been updated this is just because we are using update one function instead of update many which updates the first matching document only so let me go ahead and change this to update many now let's go ahead and run this it should ideally print two documents updated yes two documents match and two documents updated now let's verify this on mongodb atlas account as you can see our object with random has been updated now let's verify the other one our other two restaurants have been also successfully updated with this we have successfully completed the update operation of the crud app
and the last operation in our CRUD app is delete. In this, I'm going to delete all the restaurants which are called as MongoDB. First, we create a function called delete that takes collection as an input argument. As usual, I'm going to create my query set. I'll say filters equal to restaurant name equal to MongoDB. And then to execute this query, I can use delete many instead of delete one, which we learned in the previous example. Now let me go ahead and print the result. I'll print the number of documents that have been deleted. Now let's make our function as a suspend function. Now to call this from the main method, let me comment out the old code and call the method here directly. I'll pass on my collection. Now let's run this. Ideally, this should delete three documents. Yes, we have successfully deleted all the three documents named MongoDB. And with this, you have successfully completed the CRUD app. And there you have it folks. We covered a lot today from connecting with MongoDB Atlas using our Kotlin drafter to performing CRUD operations. If you want to take things even further, don't forget to check out my article. Link is in the description below. In that article, I'll go into more details about topics we covered today, like how to improve the read performance by adding indexing, or simply how to add a complex document with embedded objects or list. Plus, that also provides a quick recap on everything we talked about. Well, that's all for today. I hope you found this video useful. See you next time.